Okay, thank you all and welcome. Um, my name is Leanna Davis and I am the chair of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. Um, I'm excited to have this wonderful crowd here today um, and see many familiar faces of folks who joined us at the EduWiki conference that we ran with our wonderful co-hosts, Wikimedia Serbia. Um, gosh, I guess that was two months ago now. It feels like it was uh, more recent than that. Um, but one of the, the reasons we're here today is to share some of the results from the discussions that we had around sort of the future of Wikimedia and education um, from some research work that Cornelius did both during the conference for those of you who were there and then in a series of interviews with um, some folks who weren't able to join us in Belgrade. Um, and so I'm particularly excited to welcome Cornelius and, and have him give this presentation today. Um, for those of you just joining, please put your name and where you're joining us from in the chat. Um, and as always, this meeting is under the Universal Code of Conduct, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, but if not, I'll put a link to it in the chat. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Cornelius to get us started. Yeah, thank you. Let's just share my screen. I think we I'll present around 20, 20 ish minutes, right? And then we, we can go into uh, the discussion or discussion of the questions that I have. Um, so let's see if it works. Okay, so let's start uh, the presentation. So I'm I just give a short intro for those who don't know me. I think most do, but nevertheless. My name is Cornelius Kivelker. I'm a Wikimedian and a volunteer since 2004, and I've worked as a staff for Wikimedia Deutschland, Wikimedia Germany, for a couple of years, and then recently for the Wikimedia Foundation. And I've been involved mostly in organizing international Wikimedia events, like the Wikimedia Conference and the Wikimedia Summit. And I have a long track record of working with the Wikimedia movement, and especially with its affiliates and the people involved. Um, just to point out, because I think that's uh, essential in this context, I have not been involved in the education field of Wikimedia so far, so that the whole topic itself, like education was something new to me, but um, uh, not the people around that are involved. I think I've talked to, I knew most of them and uh, they knew me. And uh, today I'm working as a freelance project manager. And actually this was my first, <laughs> first contract that I was uh, doing. Yeah. Thanks again to the Wikipedia, Wikipedia Education User Group and the Wikipedia Education Foundation for their trust in hiring or contacting me to do this research. Um, before I go into the findings, I'm just like repeating what was this research about, what was the intention. So uh, there is a general intention to advance the global support structures around education, was well, something that for instance, exists around the or in the Wikipedia and Education User Group at the moment, and this research here that I was that I was uh, that I executed, also called as Phase One, had the goal to understand common opportunities and challenges and needs of the education community. So it is, I'm just I'm just highlighting it. It's important that this research focused on the why we need something or why you need or the education community needs something and not so much on the how it should look like yeah so that's um i think that's uh, just important to to underline and ideally this research uh is the foundation for further decision making and eventual further research in phase two as it's called um so my findings or the insights that i've uh, that I will present to you based on, on interviews or uh, material that I've gathered in about 32 in-person and Zoom interviews with education program leaders, either in Belgrade or via Zoom, as I said, and two community discussions at the EduWiki conference in Belgrade, where around 20 people attended. The project framework, uh, for project time frame was in, in overall a bit less than eight weeks, so that's why it is let's say a bit limited, like there was not so much time to do anything. Uh, the full report is already published on Meta. I think Liana already shared the, shared the link, but maybe could just share it again. Ideally, you have read it before attending this meeting, so that would be helpful. Um, 
So this presentation is structured and the, like the report is structured in, in around, I think, six sections. And the presentation here for uh, is therefore as well um, like structured in six six findings or six insights. And I'd start right away with my first one, which is not uh, which I stumbled across uh, like basically every interview, and it was that the term education, as it's been used by, let's say, in the movement, uh, by the Wikipedia Education User Group or so, um, needs a clear or clearer definition. And because at the moment it is seems to be still quite fuzzy. So while education as a term has been used first in 2005, I think it was corrected, like Wikimedia Serbia used it for the first time in 2005, it was became more prominent to foundation series with the Wikipedia Education Program by the Wikimedia Foundation in 2011. But um, when, when talking to all the different, all the, and all those different interviews, to all those different interviews, there seemed to be no, not an exact clear understanding or definition of what uh, education actually means within the movement. And um, and there seemed to be, there seems that there's no definition that is universally accepted or known. Or like there are some that have been developed, but uh, none of them are so far, yeah, acknowledged or like accepted by everyone. And uh, this, there are because that at the moment it's a very broad definition, and so it has the definition at the moment has some or like the definition, the non-definition has at the moment some overlap with simple outreach promotion activities, simply explaining wikipedia for instance while other activities are also included that are would be called or labeled as spam activities and my first insight or like first finding is that um if there is a wish to develop movement-wide acting structures for the field of education a clear definition is essential to define scope and target group for these structures um yeah so but beyond like when talking to all these all these different people and all like hearing the community discussions and generally feeling that say the vibe at the wiki edu, edu wiki conference i was able to identify three plus one main needs i explained why it's three plus one but let's focus first on the three first uh, needs and um so in general we can say that education, the programmatic activity, activities related to education are very diverse, yeah? And so basically almost everywhere, every every affiliate that I was talking to like, is in a way active within the field of education, but uh, the identified challenges and needs differ highly, uh, hugely uh, depending on if I was talking to someone representing an affiliate, or if it's, if I was talking to someone who is an individual, mostly volunteer program organizer, this first one and the second um, per, um, parameter was if they depending on the program size or program age, let's say of the education program, and the context. I think it's global north, global south, but that's to be debated. Um, challenges and needs differed a lot. Nevertheless. Most of them, or like all the challenges and needs that were identified or that were mentioned by by Wikimedians uh, interviewed, were mostly Wikimedia related. Yeah. So, um, yeah. and I was I also I was also asked to 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 ask or like to identify what existing support structures are being used, and uh, most people mentioned the. Uh, affiliate call, for instance, or the uh, staff of the Wikimedia Foundation Education Team. M many mentioned also the dashboard that the Wiki Education Foundation is, is um, promoting or is offering, providing. And there are also some regional networks that are offering some kind of support, especially within Latin America or the CE or within the Key Franca. Nevertheless, most of these ex existing support structures are limited in capacity, resources, and uh, especially when talking to individual program organizers, they didn't, were, they weren't aware of these existing support structures. So 
talking to talking to 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 to, to these interviews or like attending these two sessions, hosting these two sessions at the Edenwick conference, I was able to identify something that uh, these three needs that you can see here: coordination, sharing knowledge, and direct support and capacity building, that are where either implicitly or explicitly mentioned uh, among all of them. So, uh, and I, I will just shortly, shortly explain what they mean. So like coordination, so there is a clear need for a structure within that uh, people and pro groups, program leaders that are engaged within education can coordinate some way or like where that education, the field of education is being coordinated by someone there's a, there's a clear need for a, a structure through which knowledge around education experiences and advice can be shared. And there's also a clear need for a structure that offers direct and ideally customized adapted support to ed program, education program leaders, um, a structure that offers mentoring, peer-to-peer -peer support, and uh, or even capacity building, skill sharing, whatever. So these are the three, three main needs. Uh, yes, and so the the fourth one is the huge need around tech. It is like more more, and there the I, I try to divide this need of around tech into two different kind of needs. So one is around the maintenance of existing technical infrastructure. The other one is advocating for specific tech development yeah so there is a clear need for 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 maintenance of for maintenance at all or better maintenance of, of the existing infrastructure so that program leaders are able to have or like use the reliable tools because there is no clear tool set most some tools are not reliable there's a lack of tutorials and guidance especially around the dashboard there is it's hardly all it's limited and possibilities for the data analysis are limited, especially for when using for metrics. And uh, when using the platforms, for instance, uh, Wikimedia Commons, Commons, there are specific tech technical limitations when trying to use uh, for educational purposes. And I think I've, I've added here, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I've added here, I posted that I think Galder uh, from the Basque user group um, Use, uh, used at the at the Indowiki conference session, and he wrote, less time invested in solving technical issues equals more time invested on proposing, on proposing, in proposing new pedagogical ideas. And I think that summarizes quite well why this need is so important. Um, the other coin of this tech need is there is a general need for upgrading or developing of new tools. Yeah. So, um, and there is such any global structure around education could be could be able to advocate better or at all for uh, technical development according to programmatic needs. Because at the moment, how at the moment I think within the movement, uh, technical development is not done mostly at all according to programmatic needs. And there is um, there is a need, for instance, for there was a need mentioned for a learning platform. There are a need for, for, for tools for around video editing and closed captioning or specific file formats on Wikimedia Commons. And I think I've I've added here a quote from, from Neither that summarizes quite well why we why why there is the need, yeah, because you you as education program leaders are working mostly with the young people and young people are really like adaptive to tech, new technology and they're used to tech, uh, new technology, yeah? Like let's say video video, uh, video tools or like video platforms and um, comparing comparing with the Wikimedia platforms to other social media platforms um, looks a bit old fashioned or sometimes like there is a stronger need within the education field to be adaptive to the needs of the target groups. And that's basically what Nisa wants to say. And that's why advocacy for tech is so important. It's something that could be fulfilled by a future structure. Um, beyond these three plus one needs, there are further needs and challenges that are, um, that are determined by program size and context. And I will try to elaborate a bit on those. Um, I just want to highlight, I've talked in total to 32 people. So 
I'd say it is like my it's limited what I can say. My findings are limited in in reach or like in yeah. So don't take take everything with a grain of salt. And like if I was talking to to more people, I think I could be more specific on these needs. But this is something that I try to already uh, condensate from my uh, from my research. Yeah. So especially let's say large established long running media program uh, education programs. I'd say like Amical or Wikimedia Serbia are, are like they are self autonomous. They're well running, yeah. And so it seems that everything is fine, but uh, they are implicitly, explicitly already challenged by the global trends and developments and technology and society, which at all like in general affects the entire movement, yeah. And so this is something they say. These, these these challenges are not something they can solve by themselves, but there is a need for joint movement-wide strategies. Yeah, and so there is a need for co collaborating on innovating. Yeah, on on developing new strategies, on developing, on adapting, for instance, the Wikimedia platforms in terms of like UX, UI, and this is definitely something that cannot be done by a single affiliate, but a, a global structure could be helpful or could be the space for such. Um, Innovation. Um, then there is a there are many mid-sized affiliates, yeah, or like uh, that are very or like try to grow their education programs that usually have one staff member responsible for education. I think there are a couple of them here also in this hall, and so they try to uh, to grow and scale their programs, and uh, they they face something that is called programmatic loneliness. I think it's well coined this term at the Edivik conference, which tries to, um, which or like tries to tries to describe something that usually this staff member, this staff member on education is the only one in their in their affiliate that is responsible. Yeah, and so they there's often I cannot talk to to their colleagues, or their colleagues are not so understanding, or their community is not so understanding for the needs and challenges this uh, staff member faces. Yeah, and so. Um, there is a need to 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 connect and share across these uh, like among these um, staff members working for education, and most of them uh, mention the need for better funding, multi-year funding. Their need uh, um, a need for for better partnerships or like support and partnerships for resources in general for the reliable tech infrastructure that I've already mentioned, but also in general like for some kind of peer-to-peer -peer network structure. Yeah, this overlaps heavily to what I've said already before with the first three needs. I'm just like emphasizing this is, seems to be specifically uh, a need of uh, staff members of mid-sized growing affiliate programs. Um, then we have, uh, I've also talked to uh, several program, program organizers from emerging communities and um, Besides those Wikimedia related challenges, they're, 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 they face a variety of external socioeconomic difficulties. And so most of them say there's huge groundwork to do. Yeah. So before actually explaining how Wikipedia, like uh, before actually trying to get someone editing Wikipedia, the wor work mostly focuses on promotion, on creating awareness. Yeah. Because, like, as for instance, um, Romeo told me from South Sudan, the first day of an Wikipedia education program or like education work, workshop, you need to spend on explaining how a computer works. Yeah, that's what he calls IFC literacy. Yeah, before actually being able to explain how Wikipedia works. And there's a huge need for funding, for direct organizational support, for, for knowledge sharing. And something that I would like to highlight is um, the third need that's here written there on, the, on that, uh, the third bullet point is especially program organizers, I think Global South, I don't want to be to fix on that, that's the Global South, but like uh, they say that there is this, there's a need for support and establishing partnerships with authorities. So like, because single program organizers or like maybe smaller affiliates, smaller user groups, don't seem to be convincing or like can't convince or uh, when talking to authorities. So there is a need for an external sponsorship, some kind of, usually they mentioned the Wikimedia Foundation to be some kind of a legitimizing factor when uh, establishing a partnership. Uh, that's something that could be fulfilled maybe by a global 
uh, support structure on around education. And there is the fourth specific uh, need that is focusing, I think, mostly around the English community. But like, as I said, I, I didn't talk to so many people, so don't uh, don't fix me on that. So the the English community, the English speaking Wikipedia community is by far, of course, the, the, the largest one. So especially English speaking affiliates, let's say Wikimedia Australia or the Irish Wikimedia Community Group of Ireland are, are challenged by a lack of awareness of these, by, by, by self-awareness like, by, on, uh, of these affiliates and certain conflicts within communities. So like there are they are in, like individual program organizers, let's say like teachers at universities that are doing an education program without actually knowing of the affiliate and that they're in the same country. And so there is some kind of need on connecting these individual program organizers with the, with the affiliate. At the same time, there, there are some conflicts on, on conflicts between the affiliate and the on wiki community. Yeah. And the, and the other, on the other side, these autonomous program organizers, let's call them the teachers, um, they need guidance and support. Yeah? They don't feel supported and there is a wish for a global support structure that for on-demand needs for these program organizers. And there is also a need for, um, for support uh, for not yet created education programs. So like um, providing packages with templates, materials for for new education uh, programs or activities. Um, so that's what these were these context specific needs. Like the fifth uh, findings is focusing on on the opportunities for collaboration because such a, a global support structure could also not offer like support, but also could also be a space for collaboration and uh, among. Wikimedia education program organizers and uh, affiliates um, involved. So there is as that's all, again overlaps with what what uh, what I was saying for the, for the largest um, Wikimedia affiliates. There is a there is it could be an, an opportunity for a joint space for collaboration and emerging partnerships within the movement. Yeah, because it seems like uh, until now there aren't so many partnerships or collaborations between affiliates within the field of education yeah and so this could be a space that could facilitate or support such cross affiliate partnerships around education and um as as Lu as i quoted lucy here so beautifully um international collaboration also serves as a source for motivation of of uh, Wikimedia, well, like volunteers as well as staff members, yeah. So because they can also develop, yeah, beyond their affiliate structure and can learn and exchange. Um, there's also there's also an opportunity for advocating for the for more recognition for education programs within Wikimedia itself, because um, as a couple of um, interviews told me, they see education as the as a powerful tool to get more people involved, especially more young people and i think uh someone said i think also lucy said that something obviously what what wikimedia needs yeah to get more young people involved on this um also that also connects to that it could be also the 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 space where education gets connected to movement strategy because so far it seems that like uh, that it was hard to connect the whole education community with uh, movement strategy as an that's discourse or like an uh, ongoing conversation. Also, um, such future structures could be a platform to connect with external like-minded organizations, authorities, movements. I would like to say that, especially like OER, Open Educational Resources, I would just like to say this was barely mentioned. I think only two people mentioned uh, these connection with external like-minded organizations and movement. I think because the Wikimedia internal um, struggles, challenges, and needs were so prominent that uh, there was no space to, uh, to, to look beyond the horizon. Uh, um, so this is what, what I've identified, like, and I tried to condensate this into, so I like, tried to identify some, some patterns some, that emerge, yeah, some consensual patterns around the future structures. Just saying it again, my focus was on why and not so much on how yeah but um 
Yeah. So there is a clear wish to develop the existing structures. I'd say toward the global service provider, like or we could say there is a clear need for more global support, or there is a clear need for more support. It, I didn't focus on how the structure look, should look like. Yeah, but when even if I didn't ask, people said this global structure should have a strong facilitation agent, and um, and what I mean by no other organization, or I forgot to add, besides the Wiki Education Foundation, there was no other. Um, organization or affiliate that seem to be interested in leading such uh, such structures or developing of such structures. Something that was mentioned by many in implicitly or explicitly is that diversity, equity, and inclusion must be built in right from the start, and uh, so that such that such structures should be open for everyone. So um, it was said also, was said, several people said such structure shouldn't have an exclusive role eh? as, as the one up or as the one structure to rule them all but uh, complementary and collaborating with the existing or the upcoming structures regional hubs that's something that i would like to emphasize again but i will come back to this point in a few minutes and um but when discussing or when trying to identify the, these patterns there was a divergence on on the scope for, for such structures, narrow versus broad, I'd say. Um, so some people said such structures should be more focused, have a narrow focus on a specific target group or on specific needs, so that that these structures could offer better fitting support uh, uh, to, for, for beneficiaries, which nevertheless would mean certain exclusivity. The other, the other, or the other one was like, or the others defended others defended a broad scope so being very inclusive um as i think uh philip's quote says here on the right being less fair including everyone who, who calls themselves or like says says that they do education work but this could be not so responsive to everyone who needs and this could also mean less commitment by stakeholders and uh, a risk of failing expectations when saying we are global support structure so this is my summary. Um, I think these are just the headlines, but um, what I want to say again, there is a clear wish for more support and the kind of service provider. Yeah. And um, I try to finish with some open questions. These open questions are also in the, in the meta report. And um, again, I'm saying I, I'm not the one defining how these structures would look like. That was also not my question, but like I, but these questions emerged when when discussing these uh, the needs and challenges with the, uh, the interviews, and um, I strongly recommend trying to find answers for these questions when just discussing future or like future steps or next steps for establishing any global structure. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much, Cornelius. Um, I think this is a really good <clears throat> overview of some research. Um, I want to open it up to questions and comments now, um, maybe starting first with any sort of direct questions for Cornelius about his research or clarifications on a particular finding he mentioned or anything like that. And then I'd like to move us into kind of discussing you know, what resonated with you, what made sense, what sounded good to you that you found, you know, maybe, you know, whether you were interviewed or not as part of this research, um, from what Cornelia said, what makes sense to you and seems to be in line with your experiences running your own education programs. And then secondarily, sort of, um, what do you see that isn't in there that you also think is important for us to consider as we look toward, you know, what, how, how would we want to structure um, a support structure to better support um, education program leaders in the Wikimedia movement? Um, so I will start then first with the questions sort of directly for Cornelius and feel free to either raise, use the Zoom functionality to raise your hand, um, or if you're more comfortable typing questions out, please feel free to put them in the chat and I can read them out loud. Does anyone have a question?
I'll give a second here in case someone's typing one in the chat. And we have this presentation. Cornelius, is there a place where you can upload it on Commons, perhaps, or sure. something? Yeah, yeah, sure. I will upload this as soon as the uh, this this session is over. I will upload. Great, thank you. Okay, well, I'm not seeing any other questions about uh, your presentation or your research, Cornelius. So I think that's a that's a good sign for uh, the clarity of the the work that you did. That uh, that folks uh, seem to be um, uh, in ha don't have sort of follow up questions on the research. So so yeah, now I want to move into the kind of questions back to uh, oh Cornelius. Oh, you'd have a question. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, I think I want to move back into sort of questions for you, those of you who are in the audience now of, um, and the first one that we'll start with is kind of, what did you hear in what Cornelius said made sense to you and seemed to resonate with you, seemed to be something you have also felt in your own work as an education program leader. And then the second question, which we'll get to in a minute, is what things were missing. So what are what are things that you feel like are needs that you have that were not articulated um, in Cornelius's presentation? So I'll start with the first one. And um, ideally, I'd like to hear from several people here um, of what particularly you agreed with or felt like was um, in line with your own programmatic needs. Um, and you can either raise your hand in the Zoom chat and speak out loud, or you can type it into the chat and I can read it out loud. This is what did you agree with? What was what from Cornelius's presentation of the needs did you feel like you agreed with? anyone willing to say something? Mohammed, go ahead. Yeah, first, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very exciting and really clear. Um, I have a certain specific question with respect to uh, the challenge when you try to start a program at universities and you are facing um, the issue that the teachers are looking to Wikipedia in general, like, um, as something not authentic or, uh, you know, they kind of de decrease their students to use Wikipedia as reference. So they are not taking it seriously. Um, from my observations was more problem in the South than in the North, I would say, because uh, when where Wikipedia is very strong and good, I think the acceptance is also there. But where Wikipedia and the uh, pre-content in general needs uh, improvement, uh, they, they looked at differently and I had uh, an experience by trying to convince uh, them how important and how a uh, great change could look like but uh, still after the whole stuff I got the um, uh, feedback from the teachers uh, it was just so <laughs> um, like not really fair I would say and not deep enough so do you have experience and excuse me if it's in the research because I did not read it completely yet so um, if you have anything to share about that, thank you. Um, yeah, I was trying to to say this when I uh, when I was describing the challenges faced by um, Wikimedians in emerging communities. So that when I was saying there is a huge need in promoting Wikipedia itself or the Wikimedia platforms, creating awareness, and so there are there is not even let's say they are not able usually to to reach. To, to educate around like uh, how to edit Wikipedia, it's mostly around focusing on how to, uh, like it's more focusing on digital literacy, let's say that, on, on how I understand the Wikipedia before actually editing it. And I think, for instance, Maxwell from Ghana said, it doesn't make sense to, to explain uh, young people in high school how to edit Wikipedia. It's more important to teach how Wikipedia works. Uh, and um, that's their focus on your, and 
I didn't, I wasn't able to go deeper onto in your question on what are the exact challenges, uh, but um, yeah, does that answer more or less? So that's I, your question. Maybe, um, I mean, I, I showed them some examples of how uh, uh, poor articles were before and how they get uh, got after uh, the edits. Uh, and uh, I explicitly selected really important topics like from main categories, which could uh, interest everyone who likes to read about these topics. Um, but I mean, the view of what I, I got was, that was the challenge, it was a kind of joint view uh, from the teachers that is, um, they don't see, they just simplify the issue and say it's not authentic, you know, uh, our students should not use PPD as much as possible and why should they take uh, part at such programs? And uh, my idea was maybe I should prevent the, uh, provide them some more examples or how effective Wikipedia. Maybe I need to refer to much more comparisons that have been done showing uh, how this change uh, can really be great. I, I, I told them, for example, about what the students learn uh, in the term or with respect to their thesis that they have to write because they kind of learn a scientific way of looking at the things. They write in a style, which is really good to, they have to know uh, how to write in such a neutral way. Uh, these were um, some points, but uh, I thought for the next time, I probably I need to just get more evidences to be equipped with sometimes so silly uh, arguments, but it's they were really too strong. I could not say much about it. Yeah, yeah, but like I, I agree, agree, uh, but I, I couldn't. Oh, it, this was not part of my research. But like, there are the 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 challenges are many, like like plentiful, and when trying to convince authorities or teachers uh, in using Wikipedia. But I, there are no more details that I can share around this. I think. Yeah, I, I would say I think that's in line with sort of Cornelius's finding around program leaders needing kind of uh, templates or slide decks or sort of what has worked for other people in the past, right? Because, you know, Mohammed, you're not the only one who has faced that problem when talking to um, to instructors or teachers in different countries, right, or students. And you know, making sure that we are doing a but we collectively as the Wikimedia and education group are doing a better job of sharing our learnings, sharing, oh, I had that problem, here's how I came, overcame it, that kind of peer-to-peer -peer support and learning so that if somebody has a slide deck or, um, you know, a chart that they've used in a conversation that's helped change someone's mind or helped overcome that particular barrier, I think those kinds of of, you know, how do we make sure that we um, convey those learnings to each other so that each of us isn't independently recreating the wheel um, every time we want to start an education program, but that we have a collective of shared resources that people who are getting started or who are scaling their program can um, can. Uh, can use, I think, is, you know, directly in line with kind of one of the needs of the, the findings that Cornelius had there. It looks like there's a super active conversation going on here in the chat. Um, let me see if I can pull up a couple of, um, of comments here. Um, it looks like there's a few folks who have mentioned that it sounds like what they talked about in Belgrade, which is always great um, when you come back and reflect on something and it sounds like the conversation you are a part of, that's always good versus being like, wait a minute, where did this come from? Um, and it sounds like there's a lot of discussion around the definition of education. And I think this is one of the kind of um, challenges that I think we're facing, right, is if we decide to move forward into the creation of an education hub, which is kind of the, the precursor to this research, right? So from the, you know, as Cornelius mentioned, he wanted to focus this on the um, the what and the why and not the how, because I think, you know, what we wanted to do as a community 
of, as, of Wikimedia and education program leaders was make sure that there were kind of needs identified and make sure that we had a kind of common understanding of why we would be moving forward with creating a hub versus just starting from we want a hub and then working backwards of like, well, what does this hub do? We wanted to start from sort of what are the needs that our community has and why would we go about doing this so that we could then create a structure that would be suited to our own needs. Um, and so that's why we did sort of this phase one of this research project, sort of, I would say the phase two is, okay, how do we now move this into something that we would be able to pilot some sort of education hub? I think the results are clear that there are commonly held needs across lots of communities. And it looks like um, people are in agreement that Cornelius's findings um, seem to resonate with them, which is excellent. Um, and so the definition is making sure that we're creating a sort of narrow enough definition of what Wikimedia and education is that we can create an organization to support those needs, but a broad enough one to be kind of inclusive and um, in the spirit of movement strategy. And I think finding that right balance between who we include and who, where we sort of draw those lines is going to be the hardest part because the more narrow you make it, and this is what Cornelius was emphasizing in his report, right? The more narrow you make that definition, the more focused you can make on people's needs, where if we have sort of the broad definition of education, which the broadest definition is everything that happens in the Wikimedia movement is education because the Wikimedia projects are educational. And that's true, but, you know, an education hub will not exist to serve every member of the Wikimedia community because that's way too broad. And so, like, how do we narrow that focus from being way too broad of you know, just of serving everyone in the community to being narrow enough to meet the needs of people who are running some kind of education program. Um, so we did have a discussion. I led a sort of definition discussion and um, came up with a kind of draft definition based on that in Belgrade that I would love to get um, to get so that feedback on yeah do you have that on a slide somewhere Cornelius I, I have it I skipped it because I would, didn't want to focus on that but I have it just give me a second uh, 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 it. And here. Does that work? Ah, no, it doesn't work. it is in the report on my there we go yeah. yes and I think dun, 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 dun. Okay. so yeah several yeah. of you who are here once this loads several of you who are here on this call were in the sessions that um that I facilitated around identifying kind of what are the common characteristics of um education programs how we want to define them and this is certainly you know a narrower definition than you know everything in um in wikimedia and in you know because everything is educational it you know narrows it down to sort of there's an audience of learners that engages with the wikimedia projects through a pedagogical experience so this is not just designed to kind of teach them how to edit Wikipedia, but it is designed pedagogically to teach them how to edit Wikipedia or any other Wikimedia project, designed to ensure the audience meets a series of learning objectives. So the emphasis is on kind of teaching and learning here that this isn't just editing the Wikimedia projects for editing sake, but editing as a learning experience, um, such as media literacy or data literacy. Our efforts are aligned to be are aligned to the educational curriculum, but adaptable to context and flexible enough to be interdisciplinary. Our programs, which are designed to grow content and contributors to Wikimedia projects, are scalable and replicable. And so I think the idea behind this was creating a sort of narrow enough definition of um, of our work to identify what is unique about Wikimedia and education, um, but also being kind of broad enough to encompass the diversity of programs, because I think somebody um, mentioned this earlier in the chat that I think, you know, we need to make sure that anything we're creating is 
um, inclusive enough to adapt to different kinds of programs. Um, every, you know, there's not one structure of an education program that works in every single country. And so, you know, some of us work with wiki cup, wiki camps or wiki clubs. Some of us work in higher education. Some of us work with secondary education. Um, you know, it doesn't, you know, we need to make sure that the, the work that we're doing is sort of adaptable enough to um, reach different audiences and have sort of the, that pedagogical experience at the heart of, um, of the work that we're doing. Um, so if there's any feedback as well on this definition, I'd, um, I'd love to, uh, to hear that as well. And feel free to put it in the chat or, um, or raise your hand and share it here as well. Uh, just a question to make sure I understood yeah, it correctly, Zico. Liana. Yeah. So, fundable and supportable are only programs designed to grow content and contributors. Everything else is not considered to be educational. And it must be always scalable and replicable. Otherwise, uh, it also falls out of the definition. Did I understand that correctly? It's not that it falls out of the definition of educational, it would fall out of the definition of the scope of this formal Wikimedia and education um, hub if, as, as we move forward with it, of sort of what kinds of programs that organization is supporting, which is not to say that those par aren't also part of the sort of lower E educational efforts in the Wikimedia community so much as drawing the line of this is sort of what this organization would be directly supporting um, the sorts of resources and technical tools and things like that that would be built around supporting those kinds of programs does that distinction make sense this means something that is not replicable because it is specific to one country would not be educational according to this definition well would not be part of the wikimedia and education um, hubs support right that the and it hub also has to grow content and contributors yes so if you make something about understanding wikimedia commons and free knowledge that does not directly is uh, right meant that is an important part that is of the wiki part of it's uh, it's right it's an important yeah. part of the wikimedia universe and community and is educational but it would not be sort of focused on the um the the formal support structure of this education hub so the hub is solely about wikipedia and the classroom where you have writing assignments to write wikipedia articles and the similar no because it's wikimedia projects so it could be wikidata or commons um so growing content so if yes. it were about like you know bringing in so for example the reading wikipedia in the classroom program right exists right now as a media literacy project but i think it is a great opportunity because it builds community as a people who are interested in this in the educational sphere and so a certain subset of them will also be interested in contributing content to uh, wikipedia as well and so creating it as sort of a pathway that we can um, that we can create so that there's a funnel of bringing new people in. So I would imagine the sort of same thing would be true for a commons, right? If you're interested in, in like an introduction to free licenses, but then is designed to get people interested then in contributing their content um, through some sort of pedagogical experience where um, I think that that sort of mediated pedagogically um, that it's mapped to kind of a set of learning objectives that we're trying to teach something versus just offering up information um, to draw the distinction line there between, for example, edit-a-thons, which are designed to add content, and you are teaching people how to contribute to Wikimedia projects, but the focus is not on that sort of pedagogical element. Um, whereas we're trying to provide a sort of learning experience for the students and teachers. Thank you for the explanations. And I can imagine there will be some work on the wording and other things necessary. 
Absolutely. And yes. And I think, you know, this is something that I came up with based on the sort of two sessions that I ran um, at the EduWiki conference, but it is certainly a draft format. And if there are suggestions or thoughts on it, um, I would be happy to, to take them. Um, let me, I'm sorry, let me scroll back through the chat here and make sure I'm not losing any comments. Okay, there's a lot of comments here. Okay. The research summary looks very good in line with how we discussed in Belgrade, especially how difficult it is to define education, how the needs are different according to the size of the education program and the context from which we are working. Yes, I believe that all education programs should have clear objectives that are specifically separated from other activities such as GLAM, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. However, I do not believe that there should be a single specific me implementation method for all education programs. Every society and every institution has its own unique needs and circumstances, and the best way to achieve the goals of education will vary accordingly. The important thing is that we all contribute to achieving the same goals of education, regardless of the different methods of implementation. And I think that's exactly in line with sort of our ideas around, you know, should we decide to move forward with forming this education hub? The, the point of this is this needs to be flexible and the support system that this hub would provide would need to be supportive of all different ways people are implementing in different educational systems around the world. Um, that, you know, there's not one size that fits all um, and they need to be adapted to uh, local contexts. Looking forward to tech advocacy and better tools for metrics, as we all are. Uh, we talked about the definition. Um, did the findings of the study relate in any way to the relationship between artificial intelligence and education? What is the future of the materials and how can they be adapted to the development and meaning of the development of artificial intelligence? Um, and Cornelius replied, no, not really. AI was not mentioned by anyone during my research. However, I've mentioned the need for joint space for developing global strategies. I think that's absolutely true. That sort of side Cornelius had around sort of the, the changing trends in kind of how students are approaching things and the need for that kind of global strategy. I would say AI, AI is wrapped up in that. Um, you know, it is affecting the way it's an external pressure on the Wikimedia and education universe. And so we need to make sure we're adapting our own programs and our needs to that and having a sort of central group that's helping us understand how we're doing that would be helpful. Um, having years of experience implementing education programs, I believe that Wikipedians with academic backgrounds are best suited to lead the process of defining the definition structure and goals of education programs. Uh, thank you, Cornelius, for the presentation. I think you covered many of the challenges and needs that we often have in education programs when working with our educational communities. Faced with the needs, I think it is important we, to continue generating spaces in which we can share the needs we have as programs using Wikimedia projects and be better communicated to and disseminate general joint experiences. I think this is absolutely true. One of the things that I would like to do and that I've been um, talking with Silesh and the rest of the Wikimedia education team on is rethinking the various calls that we have. So there's like the affiliates call and there's the EWOC regional calls and there's our user group open meetings and we have lots of different calls that happen and sometimes with overlapping audiences and sometimes disparate audiences. And one of the ideas that we're interested in kind of moving forward and I've been working with the WMF team but we haven't sort of finalized anything yet is figuring out a way to bridge those into sort of one community call that would be hosted by different communities each month um, and you could step forward and offer to host it so these could be different region could host it one month in a time zone that was appropriate to them or different program types could host um, at different times. So perhaps there could be one themed around reading Wikipedia in the classroom or one themed around higher education or one themed around Wikicamps. Um, 
or one hosted by the CEE region or one hosted by ECAP region or anything like that so that we would sort of move it around and have sort of different themes and we try to sort of blend together the disparate calls and by moving them around then at different times of the day um, we could hopefully be more inclusive and bring in kind of more communities that have more um, opportunity for people who share thematic um, interests. And Renee says, why French-speaking communities are underrepresented on education programs? Could we please see how to focus on that? Um, that is a great question. I think um, linguistic differences is obviously one of the big challenges that we've faced. Um, and this is true, you know, additionally in the research. Um, I know Cornelius did do some um I think Google Translate was that right, Cornelia's interviews, um, but we had focused everything, you know, exclusively on English as a way to get ourselves started, but we definitely do recognize that um, that is not inclusive and is in fact exclusive to many people, and so making sure that we have an opportunity to have more of our, um, our work in a multilingual environment is, is certainly helpful. Um, Um, a list of interviews with program names. Cornelius will add the program names. May I just add yeah, another go for it. Uh, co comment? So I what I want to emphasize again is um, the, the this balance on how to create a global structure while being able to support as many as possible or like being able to be responsive as to many individual like regional different needs yeah so and that's I think that's the one of the core challenges when discussing or like moving forward because there is no one structure to rule them all or like I think that should be always or it sounds so that they should be always intertwined with the regional structures and the regional lens should be always included how this is then the Establish that up to discussion because there is no, there is no global thematic hub like if we talk about the hub or any other structure that is existing at the moment. Yeah, so you, you are one of the first ones discussing like more prominently such um, such uh, such structure. Yeah, so there is no no good example for it, and you're leading the first. You're the leading such discussion. How sh uh, that should look like because like whatever is like discussing a lot with, when I read the, with the interviews is regional communities and therefore regional networks emerge quite quickly within the Wikimedia movement because of cultural and geographic proximity yeah so it was really the, all those regional networks came up rather quickly while building a global thematic community is quite challenging yeah and so be it glam or be it education it took a, several years and and in general, cohesion of these uh, of a global thematic community is not as strong as the regional one. Yeah? So it's, it is really challenging to build one. And education is by far one of the strongest thematic communities that exist. Yeah, but it took more than fifteen years to be able to host and host an thematic conference on education. Yeah, while there were regional conferences much earlier, and so. Um, this is something to generally keep in mind how to build a global community while being responsive to local or regional needs and this is the question that the movement doesn't know an answer to and um so just wanted to highlight this yeah thanks cornelius and i think it is that daunting task that kind of you know leads me personally to be more interested in narrowing the focus of the target group that this hub should we create it would be serving um at least to start out right which doesn't mean that you know educational initiatives that you know as as matt says here that um may not include direct editor edit metrics um you know, if we exclude those initially, that doesn't mean that we permanently exclude those, right? It just means that we keep a narrower focus when we're trying to start out because we're already trying to support every language in every country 
with this initiative and trying to support every language in every country and anything that might be slightly educational, whether it involves edits or not. That seems like a huge scope that would, it will be incredibly difficult to narrow down a list of, you know, what activities is this hub going to be doing, right? And, you know, I think there's not going to be unlimited funds from the Wikimedia Foundation. You know, every conversation I've had, you know, says that, you know, we need to keep this sort of narrow in scope because we can't expect, you know, to have a giant organization coming out of this, right? So this is sort of, you know, how do we want to make sure that we are focused on where the needs are the most, you know, who are we serving in the education community? And, and I want to also emphasize something which was not included in Cornelius' report, which is not just serving those of us who are already here, but also serving those who have not yet joined the education community due to other barriers, right? So this is, you know, what are the needs that people would be interested in starting Wikimedia and education projects um, in other places, but because our support structures have not been welcoming or inclusive enough to them up till this point, they have not started Wikimedia and education in initiatives. And so, you know, part of our interest in this is making sure that we are not just supporting the people who are not yet here or not just supporting the people who are already here, but also supporting the people who are not yet here. And so this is a kind of critically important point that we need to kind of emphasize that was not included in Cornelius's report because it's impossible to interview the people who are not yet here because we don't know who they are um, and they were not present in Belgrade. Uh, but, you know, we need to make sure that when we're crafting, you know, if we do decide to move forward with a thematic hub um, themed around education, we will already have the challenge of having a global audience of needing to figure out you know, a governance structure or steering committee or some such thing that incorporates, you know, the needs of diverse community members in Wikimedia and education. Um, so how do we kind of address those is, you know, one of the, the big kind of outstanding questions. Um, I'm seeing... Um uh, a couple people having, uh, let me just, I'm seeing a couple people have to jump off to our other meetings, so please feel free to do so. I would encourage you to also leave any thoughts that you have on the talk page. Um, and Luisina, thanks so much for joining us. Um, but uh, but yeah, if you have other questions, please feel for comments. We definitely welcome them on the talk page of Cornelius's report on Meta. There's already a great comment there, um, but we'll be sort of monitoring the talk page and responding to thoughts there that um, I'd love to, to continue this discussion on Wiki after this, um, this session as well. Um, but I'm happy to stick around if anyone has additional comments or questions. Cornelius, go ahead. I, I just want to add, and of course you, so the, speaking from an outsider position, like you, know, you shouldn't be all like looking at the whole move, like the whole. I, I think I called this the support landscape. Yeah. So how the different existing support structures should interact. Yeah, because it's not like how the Wiki Education Foundation, the Wikipedia Education User Group, uh, and the Wikimedia Foundation uh, Education Team, and the regional networks should collaborate. Yeah? I think I think that ideally you look at all of it together. Yeah. So building. An alliance or a network, or I don't know, probably it's, and maybe different actors could take up different different support roles or so whatsoever. So there are many many options, and uh, that's why I also I think you men might have noticed it. I've never mentioned the word hub in my research, no, in my questions. Like some people have mentioned that by themselves, but like I didn't ask for them because I didn't want to say how this structure should look like. Yeah. So some people said it. And maybe it's not a hub. Maybe it's another structure. Of, of course, movement strategy offers the thematic hub as an option, but it's by far, or ideally it by far it's not preset. I think that's also what Liana wanted to emphasize. It's focusing on the what and not on the how. Yeah, so I think in terms of kind of where are we right now, right, I think the question that we're trying to, um, that we're trying to communicate here with this, with this group is, you know, 
does Cornelius's research resonate with you? Do you feel strongly like, you know, this is, you know, if that supports existed that he outlined that sort of knowledge sharing, the technical advocacy, the sort of communication and collaboration and support and mentorship and peer to peer and those kinds of things that were outlined, if those existed and were there to support you, would that help your program? Is that worth your um investment of time and effort into creating some sort of thematic structure, whether it's a hub or whether we call it something else um, that would better pull together the disparate support, you know, structures that currently exist from this user group and the Wikimedia Foundation's education team, you know, those kinds of things to pull this all together. And, you know, it would be a lot of work to do that. And we don't want to move forward with that if the community doesn't feel the community of Wikimedia and education program leaders don't feel like that would be, you know, worthwhile. And um, what we saw from Cornelius's um, research was that it absolutely did feel appropriate and did feel like it was a need that that um, the community had. And so you know, I'd strongly encourage any of you um, to comment on the talk page of the meta report, you know, even if you just have a yes, this sounds good. And this sounds like, you know, what my needs are, because I think, you know, we're trying to figure out we as in, you know, the Wikipedia and education education user group, um, the Wiki Education Foundation, which is the organization that runs the education program in the U.S. and Canada, um, who is the one who sort of hired Cornelius to, to do this research report, and, um, and the Wikimedia Foundation's education team, sort of the three of us um, as groups have been working together on trying to figure out what this looks like, and we'll be moving into kind of phase two of this research while we're, where we're more clearly defining um, those needs and, you know, potentially some global trends, we're still working out sort of what that might look like. There are some um, next steps that are listed on um, on the meta report that we're, we're looking into right now. And so I'd encourage if you have thoughts on that or have um, interest in participating in future um, interviews or future uh, parts of the program, I would strongly encourage you to, um, to leave a note on the talk page. Any other questions or comments before we wrap up? Selesh, is there anything you wanted to, to say from the WMF perspective? I, mean, I know we've talked about this stuff a lot, so I, I didn't wanna just sort of ignore you there um, and make sure that, uh, that folks knew you were also involved in this. No, uh, like great presentation, Cornelius. Like it's good to see like all the things that we have come up after the season interviews that happened and really excited to see like where we are going ahead with the next phase of this uh, collaboration, like you mentioned, Diana. Um, I think like, you know, all these discussions that are happening, looking forward to see from this conversation on the meta page, on the top page as well. So yeah, just, just more excited to see where we are going ahead next as, you know, the education community together towards this next phase of collaboration. So pretty excited about that. All right. Well, thank you so much. And thank you all for your time today. I appreciate uh, so many people showing up and having a super active chat. I will have to go back and read all of it um, when the meeting's over here. Um, thank you, everyone. And I encourage you to put comments on the talk page. And um, special thank you to Cornelius for all of his hard work in doing this research in learning about our education corner of the movement, uh, which he had not been involved in before. Um, an extra special thanks to any of you who volunteered your time to do either a one on one interview with Cornelius or to participate in one of our future of education, uh, future Wikimedia and education sessions um, at the EduWiki conference in Belgrade. And um, those were all really helpful in sort of moving us forward to this point. So thank you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>